Hello and welcome back to 3D Drawing for your Model Railway. In today's lesson we're going to make a start looking at the underframe detail for the chassis we've started drawing, uh, adding the front um, three axles in and the suspension area. So if we jump across to the, the photos that we've got, you can see we've got three solid axles, we've got some cutouts here to add in, some support bracing, the actual axle boxes and suspension arms. So that's where we're looking to draw today, this sort of area around here. So if we look to get started then. Okay, so we're jumping into Fusion. First thing we're going to do, make sure we've got this radio button checked. And then we'll turn side on. And let's find the sketch. There we go. That's the canvas we're going to want to be using. So you can see here, this area here is where we're looking to draw. So we'll just start by doing an offset. Uh, plane from this front angle. So you can see looking at the photo, this looks like it's offset by about 12 inches. So we'll we'll drag the um, frame, the offset plane in by about two millimeters. So we'll do that offset plane from this front edge. We just turn it around so we can see, and we're going to come back in a couple of mil. Click on OK. Okay, so now we'll create this sketch on that plane we've just created and we can draw using a line I think we've got this little cut out here so we're going to start it in that position and we're just going to bring this down so the first thing we'll do is constrain that to that height there and then we can move the height of this back up and define that height there, okay, four millimetres. Okay. So if we scroll down, we can create the diagonal line here, that looks about right. And then we'll do a straight line all the way across to here. And snap back into the top there. And just to close off here we go, we just did that line across the top. Okay, so we'll define this little cutout here. And it's distance. And define that distance. And we'll need to define the distance from the end. extrude this. Okay, um, I'm very conscious about how much space we're going to have underneath. So I'm thinking that I might extrude this forward. So I know that's going to lose some of the, the gap we've created here, but I think that's going to be the best option. Let's just, before we extrude it, no, let's extrude it forwards and then we can have a look, just extrude it a millimetre. We'll have a look to see what distance we've got underneath. Turn this back off. So if we inspect from the edge inwards, we're going to have 12 millimetres. Um, yeah, so measuring across a wheel set, a wheel set is 11.25 millimetres. So that it will just about fit in there, but that's going to be really, really tight. So we may need to, I think what we may need to do in, in the future is just extend this out a little bit to give ourselves a little bit of room on the inside here. Now I know this is going to make the chassis look a little bit wide, but you know these are the compromises we're going to have to make to be able to make make these things, things fit. You, you don't really want to go much less than a millimetre on, on this side frame, otherwise we're just going to not have any um, strength in it. So that might be our better option, it's just making this a little bit wider here. Okay, so let's spin this back round. Let's look at these two cutouts here. The drawing doesn't, it's not the greatest, they're not particularly the right shape. If you look at that, it's more of an arc coming over and they're 
both of them are the same. Because if you look at these, they're, they're a bit lopsided. So let's see if I've got another picture looking at a different angle. Yeah, you can see they're pretty much, it's a, it's a semicircle. So I'm going to deviate away from the drawing a little bit. I'm going to create a sketch just using a line initially. Like that. Define the length of that line. 2.7 millimeters. It's height upwards. 0.8. Distance from the end. And then I'm going to just use a three point arc to start with. So I do find two ends and then we'll drag it up height wise. Define. The radius of the arc is 1.4. Okay, let's extrude this through. And then we'll have a look to see how that looks. Turn the drawing off. Now I think. I'm going to go with that. It, you can see on the drawing how it cuts out this side and it cuts in, but I think that looks a better clean shape. I'm not entirely sure the drawing's perfectly correct there, so we'll go with that. We'll extrude this feature, pattern this feature across to this side. We need two of them. So the next thing we'll do is these support braces. Now there's a couple of ways we could do that. You could either just draw flat to the surface, draw a rectangle, extrude it outwards and then cut the surface off. Or you can create an offset plane coming down and then draw the shape. Now, it's completely up to you which way you want to do that. Um, I think I'm going to just draw a rectangle and then cut a, di a diagonal line off of that just for simplicity. So I'm creating a sketch on the um, side here and then just use the rectangle tool so if it'll snap to the top it will. I'm going to actually increase its width, it's going to be wider than it's supposed to be but I'm just after a little bit of strength. Okay, height wise. It's slightly, it is slightly above, so the drawing there is correct. It does look like it's sitting high there. So we'll define the distance across to the end. 7.38. And we'll find the distance down. Okay, and then we're going to extrude this forwards. So now if we look at the diagram, it's not, it's not quite flush with the front, so we won't have to come out all that distance. Turn that off so we get a clear view of what we're looking at. There we go, come forwards like that. And then we've got a diagonal, it's only a tiny little straight section at the top, and it goes all the way down to the, pretty much the bottom. It does look, if we can zoom in on this bit here. There is a straight section there. Okay, so we're going to create a sketch on the surface that we've drawn. If we click on this slice here, someone has informed me that it cuts through all the rest of the drawing, so you can go straight to the bit that you're looking at. Okay, it was Dave Martin, so thanks for pointing that out. Let's draw that diagonal line. And we'll define that distance there, 0.2. 
long distance. Yeah. And we can just cut this front piece off. Okay. So we've got that support base. Now it doesn't look the same because we've had to come forwards on our um, cycleway here. So it's, it's unfortunate, but it's a compromise that we will have to make. I don't want to make this too wide on the inside, so yeah, we'll just live with that. Okay, now we need to pattern these over. So, rectangular pattern, select the features which is drawn, on the direction. Um, I'm not sure if, no, we're not going to be able to do them as one because they were different spacing. And that would be two. Those two there, and then what we can do is pattern those. We can pattern that, that direction. Two of them, and we should be able to put these in the right place. That's looking good. Okay, and then if we just pattern the original one across again this last frame on the end here. Okay, so we've got those support bases all sorted. Excellent. Okay, so the next thing we'll make a start on is drawing the bearings and back into Fusion. We're just looking to do the set, to do the one of them, and we'll try and copy everything over here. So if we create a sketch on this front face, and we're using a circle. We'll try and find the centre of that point if we can. Okay, let's go for two millimeters. It's going to be slightly bigger than what it looks on the drawing, but. It's not a lot, and it will give us the, the thickness we need on the inside for the strength where the um, bearing cup goes. To find the height, 6mm, distance inside. Okay, so let's extrude this forwards. Turn off so we can actually see what we're looking at. I'm going to come forwards. So if we come forwards to this front surface here, oops, what have we done here? Uh, no. Extrude that distance I want. Come to that. So yeah, it's one millimeter there. Um, yeah, I think I will go one millimeter. That will give us 12, 14. Yeah, that might give us enough room we need for the pinpoints there. Um, we'll have to check that once we've drawn it all. So, yeah, it comes forward there. Ooh, come forward there. Um, then, if we look, so it comes forward, and then we've got an extra bit on the top here. So, we'll draw that on as well. Okay, so if we create a sketch on this front surface, uh, let's do the center point circle again, find the center there. Let's go for 1.2 millimeters. If you look at the picture, it is sloped off there, it doesn't come out straight. So we'll extrude this out slightly, come forwards, okay, 0.5 millimeters. And then what we can do is uh, chamfer off the edge here and do that by 0.2. So that looks 0.3. And we, won't, we don't want an equal distance here. Let's try and change these about. So let's 
two distances. So we're going to bring that one back a little bit. And that one with a 0.5 because that's our 5.4. So you see how I've adjusted the top goes in by 0.1 millimeter and it's going all the way down diagonal to the flat face here. Okay. And that's using that two distance setting there. Okay, next we're going to do all is these plates on the back here. Jump back into Fusion and we'll have a look at this. So you see we've got the shape here. Um, we're going to use, okay, so we're just going to use lines for this. Um, let's find the center point of this actually. So we'll draw the center point upwards just so that we know the distances are going to be equal each side. Snap there. To find that distance, and we could mirror across here once we've drawn this. Draw that. Um, let's look at the angles here. So I bet you they're pretty symmetrical as well that way, 160, that angle there should be already constrained, yeah. in fact that's the angle that I actually need to start with, so let's change that, so, yeah, one, one, oh, define distance here, Okay, so we do the same here, draw that, find that angle there, draw that O, and then we can put a horizontal vertical strength there, so they're going to be the same. Just pull this forward with the extrude tool and the 0.25 so yep. and then we can mirror that across. Select the feature that we've just done, mirror plane, do that face there. So we've got the same both sides, we check the sketch, that's pretty close, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Um, so if we just undo that mirror, and we'll draw everything else we know and need on here, because then we can mirror the whole lot over. So we can draw again on this surface. And it's be in line with the edge of the axle box there, so I can draw like that. Snap that one up to be more than two. Define the distance to the centre point. How far forward does it come? To just below the back. Okay, so the next thing we've got on there, there's another flat piece here. Will it be easier to draw this first? There's a, what I'm looking at there is this diagonal here. So I thought it's going to be easier to draw that vertical piece, this piece here first. Um, let's go with the back piece first, I think. Draw on that surface. Again, just using a rectangle tool. Oops, it's not going that distance. Go back and do this. Constraints. Constraints. Cool. 
points to that corner to that corner, it's not the height. Extrude this forwards. I'm going to come 0.25 just to give us a bit more ridge like that. Um, what do do next? So if we draw on this flat surface, have a look where that goes to. Yeah, it's going to hit the bottom of the suspension drop arm here. Yeah, I'll just do a rectangle. 0.2 thickness. Press the stay button, stay press but again. Okay, now we can coincidence that. that. Right from there to there. Distance go on diagonal and find the distance. Okay, now we can select those two profiles, extrude to that surface, go to join, and then same as we did for the diagonal members on here, we'll create a sketch on that surface. Let's have a look, does it go all the way? I think it goes to the front actually. Mm. Actually, I'm not sure I'm going to do that because I think this drop arm linked at the front. Looking at that, so I'm going to leave that actually as it is for the moment until I draw this, and then we'll look at potentially. I don't know if it is diagonal. That's difficult to tell. It could be just the angle we're looking at. It could be perfectly flat with this front. I'm going to leave it as it is for the moment. Okay, let's draw um, the suspension here then. Okay, so again we'll do a sketch. I'm going to use the line tool here. It's to there. And then we're going to use the spline tool to draw a bit of an arc. There. And then I'm just going to use the controls here to put a little bit of curving. And then we can draw all the leaves in. Go away, tick was right in the wrong place there. Okay, I'm not going to define distances with that lot, I'm just going to fix them all. Drag this forwards. If we have a look at the picture, 
Again, the leaf's slightly below the level of this box that we've just drawn there. That's looking good. Do that. I'm not going to draw all the lines coming across, and I'm not worried that they look like they're different sized leaves because you're not going to notice them. If you want to spend a bit of time you know, changing them, then by all means go ahead. But you know, what are we looking at? 0.15 millimeter there, half a millimeter there. 0.38. You could, but I don't think you're going to notice it if I'm honest with you. If you're going up to double O, maybe. Um, you could. You could, but I don't think we need to. Okay, uh, I'm going to draw the rectangle coming across here now. Get a sketch on that surface there. Don't need to define it because it's constrained with these two, just to bring it to that height there. Just to join. Okay. And then we've got the, the link, link arm coming down here. So if we look, we've got a circle at the top, a pipe coming down, and a couple of thicker circles at the bottom. Okay, so let's draw a sketch off of this surface. I'm going to use a circle to create this here. So I'm going to have a halfway point. Seven millimeters. Down slightly, join, and then it's going to come up. Join up. Okay, next I'm going to create a pipe that comes off of this and upwards. Slice that. So again, doing a circle. I have 0.4, just a little bit of thickness there. And then we'll just draw that upwards. Let's 
contact with, with the data I was on here. This is small. Okay, like that. Let's find that this position. Okay, so using the standard design for the rivets there, and then select the features, directly it's going to be downwards, open, open. Uh, they're not going to be even spaced, but actually it's big, two of them. And then I think we've got four here. Drawing's not particularly clear underneath, but I would imagine there would be one there as well. So we'll draw this one here. Okay, so we've got that one, and I'll just grab it again and go sideways. Just need two. Okay, so that's pretty much most of that sorted. But the bottom bit here, the brace at the bottom here, so I can draw on this spot surface. Okay, so it's going to do I want it to snap to that corner there. Define that length 2.3. Look at the picture. It's pretty much the same height as this here, so I can extrude it to that panel there. Make sure it joins. And there's two rivets on the end here. So if we draw again on that surface, the rivets. That center point there. Okay, a normal pattern for normal direction on the bottom here. So we've got two of them. If we look at the Picture, they're pretty close together there. The, the drawing does look like it's probably there or thereabouts. Okay, so that's I would say that's most of this done here that we can mirror over. So if we stick with that and then do mirror and then features, and I've got to select all of these slots. That lot there. 
mirror plane is just going to be any of these faces on the side here. And I click on OK. And we should have both halves of the axle drawn there. And the bit at the bottom there, good, yep. Okay, that's about as much as we could do there with that mirror. Um, I'm conscious this video is starting to get a little bit long, so I'm going to finish this video here. We'll come back on the next lesson, finish off the top half of the suspension here, and then we'll pattern this across and continue working out through some of the details that we've got on the bottom half here. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button.